Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thank you very much for making some time to check the video out. I know that everybody's really busy and there's a bunch of YouTube channels out there. So thanks for uh, tuning into mine, much appreciated there. Guys, today we're gonna give you all some tips and advice on how to fish bridge piers. Um, they're one of my favorite structures to fish. Been catching fish off them forever and got some tips and advice that I think is gonna add up to some good fish for you guys. Cause man, this is a good time of year to fish them. I mean, I, to me, the best time to fish bridge piers is about from June until October. So we're gonna get into that in today's video. So before we get started guys, just a couple quick uh, uh, reminders here. I wanted to invite everybody out there if, um, you, if you've ever considered becoming a channel member of Intuitive Angling, it's a really good way to support the channel. And channel members get extra videos every week that aren't seen by the public and some access to my personal email address. So if you're interested, just shoot me, uh, just go to my uh, YouTube homepage. And at the bottom, you'll see a little thing that says join. And that gives you all the information that, for that. So much appreciated. Okay, guys, bridge piers, man. <clears throat> this, is, um, this is one of those structures that gets a lot of fishing pressure it's sort of like riprap it's like riprap gets a lot of fishing pressure like for example the riprap on the dam dam wraps are probably one of the most common fishing areas on any lake but there's a ton of fish that that use them and move in and out of them and that is why uh, bridge piers are, are also pretty good simply because bridge piers are stopping off places for fish that are moving a lot and it's not like they're resident there. A lot of fish swim. They stop at these things as they're coming down the lake. Um, they're good places to hang out with. They provide cover. They provide a food source there. And one of the reasons that they use them is that, you know, bridge piers have a couple different things that fish use. They have a lot of plankton and algae on the concrete themselves, which attracts, you know, smaller fish, bait fish, you know, perch, that type of stuff, brings in the bass. And also they provide um, ambush points and shade because, you know, obviously there's a bridge overhead and don't discount, we'll talk a little bit about this in a second, the overhead shade from a bridge. But anyway, the, the things that you have to consider when you're fishing bridge piers, there's two different factors in my opinion. Number one is the species of bass that you have in the lake. And number two is the water visibility because that's gonna dictate technique a lot. For the most part, you're gonna find that um, bridge piers are not that effective if you have dirty water. I've never really done that good on bridge piers if you've got less than two foot of visibility. Um, it just seems like the fish don't suspend around them and use them quite as much. Now they will use some of the shallow piers, like if you got some piers that are in shallow water next to the bank on, on a bridge, sometimes they get on that. Um, but the deeper pilings in the piers, not so much there. So you really need to have um, water visibility, I like it between say three to 10 foot visibility. Ideally, if you gave me, you said, okay, Randy, what's your best water visibility for fish and bridge piers? I would say four to five foot clarity is where a lot of fish use them. Now, the thing about it is if you have um, a lake that has a mixed species, specifically a big spotted bass population, these fish will school in big numbers around these piers and not just the piers, but like I said before, they'll suspend underneath the bridge in the shade. So one of the things when you're fishing piers, before we get into that, don't overlook the water between the piers. It's because a lot of times what happens is the uh, angle of the sun will put off shade at a different angle depending upon time of the day. Like at noon, you've got straight under the bridge and maybe at nine or o'clock or ten, two o'clock in the afternoon, you still have a shade line, but it may be away from underneath the bridge those fish will move with that shade line and they'll suspend in that shade line anywhere between five to 40 foot deep, depending upon how clear the water is. So one of the things you can do is simply just graph out there with your 2D sonar between the pilings and look for bait fish or fish out there. They're really easy to see and they're really easy to catch also, but the best places on a bridge pier are on the pier themselves and they use all sides of the pier. A lot of it is based upon current if you fish piers, like for example, on Lake Pickwick, you guys that have fished Lake Pickwick on the upper end, you know you have a tremendous amount of current on some of those piers. So obviously they're gonna be tucked in, you know, behind the, you know, down current side to break that current. But other lakes like, uh, you know, man-made impoundments that don't have much current, they don't, they can be anywhere. They can be on the sides, the face, anywhere out there. So the current will position the fish on these bridge piers. and. Another thing about that is just because if you've got some current, don't feel that those fish are going to be behind that current because a lot of times 
the fish will be all over it. Fish can withstand more current than what you think, and there's also current breaks underwater that you can't see. But the main thing, guys, is target the, 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 the main angles that I use. Is I, t I target the two ends. You've got an upstream side and a downstream side. Now, the, the, the downstream and the upstream side are usually the best, followed by the sides. Now, you, they can be all over the place, but my, my first cast is usually parallel to one of the outside parts. And my favorite bait is like a little swim bait, like a, meza, meg, like a mega bass spark shad or something like that, three inch or some type of a drop shot, you know, just pitching a drop shot out there. Um, especially if you got clear water with spotted bass and smallmouth bass. But if you have a lake that is specifically largemouth, um, the two lures that I have done the best on are jerk bait, like the Mega Bass Vision 110, and some type of a walk in top water, if the water's clear enough. Guys, those, those fish will come out of 20 foot of water and hit a walk in top water along the shady side of a bridge pier. So don't, you know, hesitate to try that but a jerk bait is a really good bait to throw along a bridge pier um, but the main thing guys is just um you you've got to just figure out where those fish are positioned and a lot of times you can see those fish and they won't bite um, simply because they do get a lot of fishing pressure they're obvious structures a lot of people fish them that's why for example on lakes here in missouri you can you could see them on your depth finder a lot of times and not catch them. And then some guides will go in there with a live crawdad or a live night crawler and catch every one of them. So these are highly pressured, highly educated fish, but, but they're consistent and they're always there. A lot of times it's just a matter of using the right bait and timing. So anyway, hope it helps out. We'll talk later.